today was an interesting day in the stock market. Why? Because we had a big down day. We had a 6% down day, something close to 6% in the U.S. stock market today. And it got me thinking about how the psychology shifts very quickly. And what is the appropriate way for an investor to respond to these types of things, if anything? So it got me thinking about the lion who is lurking in the grass, the tall grass, and the gazelle that's out in the field. And if a gazelle hears some rustling of that, that grass, it's the same feeling in their bones that we feel as investors when we have a 6% decline in one day. It's an alert. We go, wait a minute. Is there danger around the corner? Am I going to get eaten by that lion? Now, some gazelles will just freeze and they'll do nothing. Others will move away slowly and they're not sure what to do. And some will just outright run. So most of the time, you know, you could have just wind that is rustling the grass and the gazelles that ran kind of look stupid, right? They, they ran and they had no reason to run. The gazelles that were frozen are more likely to get eaten. And the gazelles that kind of slowly step away are kind of taking a middle ground and then they're assessing as, as they go along. I think that's a better way to deal with these big drops. Because historically, when you take these big drops, usually the stock market in the United States over its history has rebound from there. So, you know, you could say that you have a better than equal chance that something is going to happen that's going to cause a positive surprise, not a negative surprise. So to just flat out run seems crazy, especially if you know the area really well. And so the analogy with an investor would be if you know your positions really well, and if your positions are holding up really well, then there's less to be fearful about. But you should take heed because there are some times that that 6% drop leads to a 30% drop or a 50% drop in the future. So I think that's the way to be looking at it. So now's the time to be just stepping away a little bit. So the way our models work is if volatility is increasing, our sizes are going to decrease. And we're going to look at our positions that are not doing well. Now, when you have a market that has been doing as well as it has been over the last couple months, those positions that are not doing really, really well are suspect. It's almost like having a lame uh, gazelle. The lame gazelle is going to get eaten first because they're hurt and they're not going to be doing as well. So if the market takes a dive, those would go first, most likely. So it's a good time to be looking at your position sizing. It's a good time to be saying, what do I own? So those people that just say, oh, a big decline like this, it's a buying opportunity. You know what? Most of the time, historically, that is true, except, except when you're in a bear market. Now, if you, if you step out a little bit and you look at this market, we had a V bottom occur in 2019, and then we rallied into new highs, and then we had another V bottom from this pandemic. If you step out, many technical analysts would look at that as being, this could be a broadening bear pattern. So I'm not convinced of that, but let's start off with first principles. What do we know? Well, the big, what we do know is that there is some propensity for the COVID virus to continue to be spread, even in warm weather. We do know that as those, some areas like Arizona and Florida and Texas that have allowed for um, their population to be a little more free flowing, they're starting to see a little bit of an uptick. Not a huge uptick, but an uptick. So uh, the market reacted harshly to that. I don't know that that's enough data, right, to, to really, really tell you, okay, well, this is it. We're going ahead and down further. But it is enough data to tell you to maybe you should look at your positions and take some off the table. Maybe you should look at your sizing. And so our idea is to be like a cyclist. So um, I was talking to my brother-in-law and he was talking to me about a concept in cycling where the way that you can maximize your distance per unit of effort is to have more of a consistent pressure on how you're, you're pedaling. So we 
kind of take the similar approach. We're looking at volatility. If we're going uphill, right, we're going to have to be careful. If the volatility is going higher, then we're going to position size smaller. If we're going downhill and everything's easier, then we'll be going a little bit bigger on our position sizes. Uh, but it also has to do with our signal strength or how attractive a particular investment is based on its fundamentals, based on its technicals. So, it, you know, having discipline in this, env this environment is really, really important. Investing is not really that hard. Uh, it's, it's a function of, it's what's really hard about investing, I should say, is the psychology. But the actual concepts of investing are well known. And, uh, but, you know, it doesn't matter what your approach is. I was just having this conversation with our financial planning assistant. It doesn't really matter if your approach is one of indexing. You're just saying, look, I'm just going to own everything in the market and that's it and I'm fine. Actually, those people go through extreme pain when the markets are selling off and regret. Uh, when uh, those people who are market timers to the extreme, they feel horrible when they miss a move moving higher. They feel horrible when they when they uh, buy and it turns down or they get whipsawed in and out. There is no perfect investment program. There's always some form of mental anguish with any investor uh, because we don't know the future with perfect foresight. And so uh, investing precepts and principles are easy to understand, but they're very hard to do sometimes. So uh, in this environment, that big drop that we just saw, to us, it's just like, okay, that is the grass uh, wiggling around, and maybe that's wiggling around because of the wind, and it's still okay. And maybe it's not. Nobody knows. I don't care who's out there. We can look at the data. The first thing we always do is say, what can we know? And based on what we do know, what can we do? And then we just use mathematical principles as well to manage risk. I think that's the best way to go, being disciplined. Anyway, just a few thoughts because most people are going to see that 6% drop and they're going to go, whoa, is this the bear that's going to come growling again? So what do you do? Maybe you just step a little bit away, but you don't run. At least that's what we're not going to do. Louis Giannis, Wealth Net Investments, signing off. Have a great day.